as soon as we get this, we want to get this FDA approved. We think it'll take about 12 to 24 months. This is considered a device, not a medication. So it doesn't go through the rigorous testing and nonsense. It's crazy what they have to do for drugs. It could take seven to 10 years to get a drug through. But a device usually can take as little as 12 to 24 months. Uh, and that's what we're hoping for. If we can get FDA approval and simultaneously European, right, covers a lot of the territories we want, that opens the floodgates. I mean, really, I'm not going to be able to handle it. You know, I'm going to have to hire a, a staff of 100, you know, just to get the calls done and, and people calling in from everywhere. It's going to be a phenomenon, actually. You know, it's going to be a big deal. We've got to be ready for it. And we will be within a couple of years. You know, we have, in fact, we have investors because, you know, you, you need a good between 20, 40 million dollars, you know, to get this launched and so forth. So we have a handful of investors that are partnering with us to make this happen because it's not inexpensive. I mean, I have estimates up to 90 million to get this through the FDA. And I think that's a little overkill. I think it's a little, um, but we're, we're estimating at least under 40, under 40 million to get it done. And we're going to get it done. You know, it will be done because it needs to be done. It's, 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 it's something that is, is a demand for it all over the world. And there's nothing meeting that demand other than these surgeries. I'm not against surgery, by the way. I mean, that's a reasonable alternative if you want to be larger. And I uh, wouldn't say, hey, don't ever do that. But they have to know there's an alternative. Okay, and this is going to sweep the market worldwide and so forth. And doctors are going to love it, actually, because the doctors doing surgery are going to have this as an option as well for their patients. And patients want that. You know, they're seeking out for these things and so forth. So hopefully it'll be a worldwide thing, help the guys and so forth. Like women have their breasts done. Wonderful. Okay, they have everything else done too. I mean, they can do tip to, tip to toe, whatever. It doesn't matter. Head to toe, whatever. Uh, guys, what do guys want? They want hair and a bigger penis. That's it. Two main things, right? Uh, so it'll be a good thing ultimately, okay, to get this through the FDA, get it worldwide, uh, get into other countries and so forth and establish ourselves and, and move forward. You know, for a small change in the body, think about it, you know, we're taking an organ of the body and just enlarging it a little bit, okay? The parallel is the breast implant, right? So you have a woman who's flat and now she's a C cup, right? Well, it's just a physical change, right? But we're not just physical people, right? Uh, we have a soul within us, you know, and a spiritual aspect about us, an awareness about our bodies, right? How important that shape is, how we look, how we look to others, and so forth. So, for example, uh, women that have breast implants, obviously it's visible, right? And they feel good about themselves. The shape has changed, right? They feel better about themselves. Their spouse probably feels better, maybe. We're going to take a guess there, but maybe they'll be happy because they're happy. Okay, not necessarily because they're bigger, uh, but I'm sure that plays a role as well. But the point is that with the men, it's the same thing. That change in that area, okay, the genital area, the penile shaft. I mean, I can have a conversation with any man on the planet, and I've had conversations with just about everybody throughout the world. They'd call me, and what are they going to say to me? Here's what they say to me. I don't know if I'm satisfying my wife. I feel too small, okay? This is in the brains of every man on the planet, Okay, I don't care what size they are. They always think, unfortunately, about their manhood, their size, okay? As rudimentary as that is, there's this an issue with that. Now, what makes that connection is unclear. Like, why, do we, why are we so focused on that a lot of times, right? Why is that? It's just that the nature of it in general, it's, it's hard to pinpoint. There is a, uh, we'll add this as a segment, there's a biblical reason, okay? So I don't know if we're going to keep this in there, but... There is a biblical reason as to why men think about their bodies and also women, okay? For example, uh, Christians who read the Bible, they'll see in Genesis that once Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, okay? Whatever that was, whatever that event was, it caused something, it caused a change. From them being naked to all of a sudden being ashamed of their bodies. And now they're covering themselves, right? Back then, it wasn't so, okay? They were not ashamed of their bodies. It was like, you know, looking at the penis was like looking at your arm. Like, you wouldn't have any reaction looking at your arm, you know? So, whatever that did caused shame. And that started the ball rolling, right, from our original parents. 
for those who believe that Genesis story. Uh, uh, from that day forward, it has remained. You know, everyone's born from Adam as a child. And they are shameful as well. That's why we cover our bodies, right? I mean, you don't see anyone walking around naked usually. That's not the, the norm and so forth. So whatever the cause, let's say we, it's a biblical source, which I believe, but let's say we're just not sure, but it's a reality. Men feel uncomfortable in their own skin there, okay? And what do they want? If they had an increased size, it seems to satisfy them for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're not looking at a small penis anymore, right? It's larger. That's favorable. It satisfies their partner. Big deal. Because a lot of, let's say, women, I don't say a lot, but there's a few women out there that are particular, right? And they might say to their significant other, hey, you're pretty small down there. Now, that, forget it. He, whatever that woman just said, it'll stay with him the rest of his life, okay? Forever, okay? So I, I would like to tell all the women out there who are watching, um, if you think your partner's penis is too small, don't say it. Otherwise, he's, it's over in his mind. He's going to be feeling not so good, okay? Now, you might want to hint, you know, and maybe give him my number <laughs> or something. Um, but here's how it plays out. It plays out, hey, you know, everything's fine, everything's good sexually, your size is good, whatever. But I heard about this guy who does this procedure, you know, I don't, I don't know if it'll help, I don't know if it'll be something good or not, or whatever. It's a, it's a tough thing to dance around, you know, that little, that subject, it's a touchy subject. When men uh, think about themselves, and their physical characteristics, and they feel a little insecure, especially about their penile size. It affects them, not just themselves, but affects their, could affect their marriage uh, and their life, their job, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It affects everything around them and within them. As it, it seems like it's pervasive. Unfortunately, this is just the nature of it. When you feel insecure about something, it affects you in other avenues. So when it affects, let's say, your marriage, for example, if if you don't feel secure about yourself and you feel ashamed about yourself, your spouse is going to pick up on that. Okay, that's not a healthy thing for a marriage. And a lot of marriages unfortunately fail because of that insecurity. Maybe there's not as much satisfaction for the partner because in, in reality, a smaller penile size might not stimulate the vaginal space, right? There's other ways to stimulate the vagina, vagina and so forth. We know that. But maybe some women want to be stimulated with the, the penis penetration aspect of it. If they don't have that, it could weaken the relationship. As superficial as that sounds, that's reality, unfortunately. It's just the way it is with physical people, right? Um, I think that couples who truly love each other overcome stuff like that, right? But not everybody can over overcome things like that. So the point is that if like going back to the woman, let's say she feels insecure and she's not feeling well and the husband picks up on that. Maybe they, they'll have a fight once in a while for no reason, whatever. But it's, it comes to that insecurity issue. So it's not healthy for the marriage. So if a woman gets that implant, she feels good about it. He feels good about it. Everyone's happy if it's better for everybody. Something relatively small to do, a small change in the body, physical. Well, the same thing with the men. When they get larger, guess what happens? They have more confident. Self-esteem goes up. The spouse sees it. Their performance is better. She feels better. Both are excited. Okay? It's like I tell them when they do this, it's like dating all over again. You know, you're like with a new person and so forth, a new experience, a new feeling. I mean, it's a phenomenal thing. If you hear these uh, testimonials, right, they say it's just unbelievable, right, what, what they're experiencing. Now, of course, I don't want to promote promiscuity, right? It's always, it's always bothered me. Uh, in the beginning when I was practicing, I said, maybe I'll just treat married couples. But here's the problem. You have young men with micro penises. It's, called, it's a micro penis uh, medical condition, actually. It's classified as one. And those men basically want to jump off a building. It's sad. Okay? So I said to myself, how can I not treat them? Whether they're married or not, it doesn't matter. So I said, well, now I have to treat everybody. Okay, so I treat everybody indiscriminately. So I think this is the way it has to be. And those who have micropenis, well, what defines micropenis is you have a penis under four inches in length, uh, and the girth is four inches or less. So it's like four by four, which is very tiny. However, with, with this treatment, 
we could take a four inch girth and easily make it six. Now the average is about five. So I can go beyond that for them, okay? Now when we enlarge them, when we talked about the expansion of the filler, it's a three dimensional expansion. So eventually if we get into six or maybe more, if we need to, that four inch length or three and a half could go four and a half to five. I've seen that. So imagine increasing the girth significantly, pushing the penis forward to near normal lengths, basically saves their lives. The only downside I would say, which I we're trying to remedy is the glands. The glands is the head of the penis here. With a micro penis, it's, the glands is very tiny. It's like the tip of my finger. So we try to enlarge that as well. Now we're not as successful enlarging, enlarging the glands as we are the shaft. However, regardless, if we can get the shaft enlarged above average, which is easy for girth, get it pushed out, you're basically saving their lives. It's a big deal. I had men say to me they want to cut their penis off. They just want to cut it off because they feel humiliated. humiliated. Some people want to commit suicide because of it. That's how serious that is, okay? Um, so we're all kind of thinking about it. Whether you're small, medium, or large, everyone kind of thinks about it, okay? I've had all of them in my practice, right? Why are the large guys coming? Well, they're used to that size, and they just say, you know, I want to be bigger. That's just the mentality. I'm not saying it's bad, right, um, of course. It's just the, the nature of us. This is us, this is our minds, this is what we think and so forth. So getting back to the positive aspects around us, what happens around us when you have a male enhancement is when you have a higher self-esteem, you feel good about yourself. The whole world changes in their opinion and view of you. And the wife sees it, the friends see it and so forth. Uh, but you know, it, it brings up a funny story. I, I, I had a patient who um, did the procedure and his wife absolutely loved it. It was fun for them, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, when they go out with their friends and they have a few drinks, the woman says, uh, she says, oh, thank you, Dr. Loria. <laughs> it's the funniest thing because the, the friends are going, what? Who, Dr. Loria, who's that? You know? And he gets so embarrassed, you know, because they're going to look, look me up now to find out what happened. Uh, but the point is that it increases the man's self-esteem and confidence, period. So I have mean, a question. And unfortunately, that's what we need. We do need that, okay? We don't like to feel insecure. No man does, okay? And it works very well. It's safe and effective and so forth. Uh, now, what else it does, you know, it could affect your work, obviously, because if you're depressed with this, right, small penis I issue in your mind, it could affect your work. You may, may not be ambitious to, you know, expand your, uh, your, whatever, if you're employed or not, if you have your own company, for example, to expand in your company, you might not have the motivation, right? Because depression could set in with those things too. So anyway, I feel that it not only enhances the marital relationship, okay, but enhances all other relationships around them. You, you gotta say to yourself, how can that be, you know? I'm increasing my penis size and all these things are happening, right? It's just, that's the nature of it, I hate to say. I mean, it's like a woman with new breasts. She feels better, she looks better, she speaks better, like more positive and so forth. It's just, we're physical beings and that's just the nature of these things.